Welcome to the Holy Maneuver Podcast. I'm Mark. And I'm Mike. We're two hardworking dads trying to immerse ourselves in Star Wars and fit it into our very busy lives. If this is your first time listening and or watching, in this sometimes short-form Star Wars podcast, we'll share our thoughts on different topics from a galaxy far, far away. Where do Sith shop? I feel like I should know this. Probably. Maybe. <laughs> uh, bad Sith and beyond? close that'd be that's actually a really good one but uh <laughs> at, at the mall everything is half off nice right but i'm <laughs> the mall but do, but do they come with spider legs i mean you know sure now they can absolutely <laughs> these are things nice. that can happen in in star wars land <laughs> yeah uh and speaking of that uh welcome back adam uh, you joined us recently uh a few Welcome. weeks ago for an episode of Andor. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> so we, figured, we figured we'd we'd ask you back. I think this is your third time on the show now, right? Yeah, so you did Obi-Wan, and then you did so. an Andor. Now you did another Andor. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We did it was episode, uh, I believe, episode five of Andor. So, like, right before that, the... Yeah, it was, it was episode five of Andor. Nice. I'm fairly certain. So, so we are now on episode 29 of the Hold'em Maneuver talking about episode nine of Andor. Uh, before we get into the episode discussion, uh, really quick, we'll go through a few of our segments really quick here at the start. Um, we haven't done this one in a few weeks, uh, but it's going to be kind of a little mishmash for the our I Am Your Father story time. Now, Adams will be related to it in that it is Star Wars. <laughs> and that it made it, it, made, it and it made him feel like a kid. So oh yeah. Uh, so what what Absolutely. is your story this weekend? Uh well, I went to Disneyland uh as an as by myself, which was amazing. I highly suggest going there by yourself. If you're gonna go, go by yourself. <laughs> uh, but if you can't if you can't go by yourself, and uh you know you have the means of which to do so uh, you can take your kid and get yourself a real lightsaber, which was a ton of fun. You can hear it makes like lots of sounds and stuff. Nice. But what this makes me feel like is a kid. And if I had a kid, I don't think I'd actually let him play with it, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, oh, yeah, what... I think he would stay far, far away from it. Uh, it is what... a, it is a treasure and it, and, um, while I didn't cry, I was humming uh, the Star Wars theme literally the entire time I was in uh, Galaxy's Edge uh, and and waiting in the lines to go on the attractions and stuff. I just got to feel like a kid again, uh, and I was by myself. So like when you're childlike uh, in that like mode and you're by yourself and you have that freedom of adulthood, it's like pretty cool. Like imagine if you actually were like a 12 year old in Disneyland by yourself, like no parents telling you to do anything. You can eat all the cotton candy, all the ice cream, get whatever you want. That's what it's kind of like as an adult. It's like yeah, that's the last time I went, I was 12 or 13. And that's my cousin worked there at the time, like I was saying before this. And he just like brought us behind the scenes. Like we skipped all the lines, free food everywhere. Be like, I don't know what he did there or if he was just stealing. I don't know, but we didn't wait for anything. We didn't pay for anything. And it was that's why I'm a little uh, gun shy about potentially going here in a couple of weeks. All right, because <laughs> you, you, got, you got too used to it. You got, you, you got a little taste, a little, <laughs> little morsel yeah. of, of what was on that the other side. Having a, going with a three-year-old is probably a bad idea. No, I'm just kidding about not taking your kids. <laughs> no, no, no I, I'd take her still, but... <laughs> She's not gonna understand find, lines. She's not gonna understand why. Just she find can't Anakin do what she and you'll be fine. Yeah, that's yeah. true about the lines. There were some I honestly I didn't really have and I, I stood by the strollers for a while because that's where we met up with the people we were with. Uh and there weren't too many screaming children. I don't it was a, pr a pretty decent experience as far as that goes. Mm -hmm. So nice. very cool. Yeah, I mean, and if you want, I'll I don't know like what the time length limits are on Instagram now, but the edited video you sent me, maybe maybe I'll post that on our Holdo Instagram if you if you don't mind. The uh oh yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Yeah, that's like a six like, minute video. Yeah. <laughs> so I, I will attempt to post it there. If you see it on there after you've watched or listened to this episode, then it worked. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> success. Oh. Yeah. Uh, and then, yeah, just b- between uh, Ralph on the show last week, like hyping it up. And then uh, Mike Lee, like going on that Halcyon and then going there a few weeks ago. Um, it's really hyping it up in my mind for me for <laughs> later this month for myself. And I, I know Mike is really trying to, to win the battle on his side so that uh, instead of now Hogwarts is cool too, but I know that he's trying to win the battle to go to Batu rather than, than Hogwarts. Well, my, the selling point is where it is in Disney world. There's more for my kid to do than in universal studios. That's so, true. She can go be, over, do whatever. Yeah, can be like there's, there's Toy Story Land. Yeah, she can go play there's with Wood and Buzz, Mickey, uh, Woody yeah, and Buzz, and I'll just go make a lightsaber. Like, there's pretty much Mickey yeah. Minnie's Runaway Railroad uh, thing that is in the great, the old Great Movie Ride, which R.I.P. to the Great Movie Ride because that <laughs> ride was awesome. Um, but yeah, there's there's a ton of stuff to do at Hollywood Studios. Just strap yeah. her into Tower of Terror and go have myself a time. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> Just stay here. <laughs> You'll then, be fine. Then you can have a that that'll be a good segue into me. Um well I guess actually you you go first, Mike. Uh what what was your story this week for the my, the I'm your father story? My story is this week is um I'm currently in an off site location to film this. I'm at my office at work because my kid is sick and like it's just so hard to deal with that emotionally. And cause like she's taking the medicine, she's doing everything she can, but she's just like, it's just so hard to see them like suffer in any type of way. Right. That's just, like been really stressful trying to like make sure she gets better. But at the same time, like you gotta like do stuff to keep, like you gotta keep the house going. You gotta do all these things. But like, all you want to do is like, I want to like put all my energy into you getting better. Mm-hmm. So my wife Grace she's like just go to the office get this record your show because there's no way I could have been at home and not had a screaming child <laughs> sitting here with me well she'll get better soon hopefully and then uh, she can uh, yeah hopefully <laughs> I think I think today like was on the upswing that's good she, she gotta feel good so that she can go to Florida <laughs> We we told her that yeah. we're like you got to get better to go to Florida. She's like, I'll go anyway. I was like, okay. <laughs> like, I mean, she would, like, I guess. <laughs> I have a choice. I'll get all these Floridians sick. <laughs> <laughs> she thinks we're going to the beach, so she's in for a rude awakening when we're in inland Florida. <laughs> this doesn't look like we go to Orlando. Where's the beach? Well, it's uh, there's Blizzard Beach right there. Uh, Daytona Beach isn't too far from Orlando, I think, either. Yeah, it's everything's yeah, it's, like forty-five minutes from where we are at most. So yeah, and I mean, and I mean, eventually everything in Florida will be near the beach too. So you got a couple of years. She's, yep, she's, she's got she's got that going for her, which is nice. Oy, Florida doing things <laughs> right. <laughs> and if you're in Florida and listen to this, welcome. Uh, so <laughs> speaking, it's of not your fault. Your state is backwards. <laughs> speaking of things that are in florida uh i remember years ago uh, when i like i think the last time i was in florida was like 1998 uh we went to like when nickelodeon studios was there um now i think it's like some random part of the universal studio I mean, it's still there it's just not nickelodeon uh, anymore. yeah it doesn't it doesn't look cool it's like gray and blue now rather than like it's all like all the, the mcdonald's play places are growing up coach. that grew up yeah <laughs> Man, my my segue I was attempting here was that <laughs> this ca- cartoon was on Nickelodeon. It was Avatar: The Last Airbender. Uh, so, and this has a Star Wars connection too, because Dave Filoni worked on Avatar: The Last Airbender. No connection with James no. Cameron Avatar. No, no yeah, no, 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 no blue cats. Uh, but it, for Halloween, uh, my son. Uh, ended up going as the character Sokka from Avatar: The Last Airbender, 
Mm. Uh, and what was funny about that is that that character usually has like a like a top knot in his hair, mm. but the day oh, before, Perrin. yeah, kind of like Perrin. Uh, the day before uh, Patrick got his Halloween costume, he got his hair cut a little bit shorter, and his point of reference for it was uh, Keanu Reeves via uh, Bill, the original Bill and Ted movie. <laughs> So that's that's how he got it cut. And I was like, "Are you gonna get your hair blown out too?" Because his hair is kind of like, <laughs> like really like blown out. The unwashed look. He didn't do. <laughs> yeah, uh, but so it ended up being like too short for him to do like the top bun. So it was like Sokka if he just like didn't do the top bun, I guess. Before he um, discovered the top bun. Yeah, yeah, and because my son's so tall, like the the pants for the costume ended up being like capris because of that mm-hmm. <laughs> so it's like this weird but like the rest of it fit fine it was just like the pants were capris somehow that's so, funny but, poor kid i'm yeah. sure he was fine yeah he was fine he had, had fun trick treating. i don't care how long he took or treats for i mean he's he'll be 17 in like two weeks but <laughs> whatever up so it's tough to him <laughs> yeah it's it's tough being a teenager give give the give the kids candy for however long they they want to go trick or treating, you give them candy, you close the door in their face. Like it's their gamble. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah two choices. If if they're being nice and they actually made the effort to wear a costume, right? And, like aren't just like you know wearing like a t shirt or something like that. Then that's what it's all about, anyway. I think yeah. if so, like if if I if I as a forty two year old man wanted to go trick or treating, if I put the effort into a costume and I put a and I put a, a sack in front of your your face for, <laughs> for during Halloween, I say trick or treat. I don't need a full candy bar. You can give me a potato. I don't care. Yeah. <laughs> just, they do that at work. Him, just give him a watch or something. You know, yeah. he doesn't like that. Give him more. <laughs> but, they uh, let yeah, the kids so, at work. At college, the school I work at, go trick or treating, and there's also an elementary school nearby, and they let those kids come on campus and trick or treat around the offices. And I was like, they're coming around, and all the little kids from the elementary school, I was like, you're not in costume. What are you doing? You're just in a winter jacket. Like that is not a costume. And then well, there's one girl the- dressed as Ahsoka. I was like, you're getting the full bowl, bowl of candy. You showed up. <laughs> That's the downside of like living somewhere like on like I guess like the northwest or northeast. It was seventy degrees that day though. Oh, like why I, were you wearing a winter coat and no costume when you knew you were going trick or treating? That was the costume. They're like, I'm going as somebody that's cold when it's seventy degrees. <laughs> no, I asked him. I was like, Where's your costume? I forgot. I was like, It's Halloween. You forgot. <laughs> that's you the one your thing. Parents forgot you to buy it. Forgot to buy it for you. Rather, that's funny. the college students are just as bad. I put one streak of makeup over my face. That's a costume. You could do anything. <laughs> like you could be a bum, just like dirt up some <laughs> clothes and tear some holes in it or something. And like there you go. You could do anything. It's a costume. One kid oh, was a deadbeat dad. I did laugh at that. <laughs> he was walking around in a bathrobe and a coffee cup that was spilling everywhere. I was like, there's some trauma there. Yeah. He's like, that's my, my dad for Christmas <laughs> or ha- Halloween, Christmas. On They're Christmas, insane. sometimes some people refer to Halloween as their Christmas. So I'm, I'm safe that. there. I think I'm and they listen to Corns. Let get the Santa Claus. Uh, oh yeah. man! <laughs> so derailed from, from from there. Uh, we'll segue into like our our brief uh, news section, which is and or related. Um, it's mostly just talking about season two of and or is actually going to start filming. Uh, pretty soon so it's going to be starting on the 21st of this month uh november 21st 2022 uh so i guess and it sounds like they're going to be flying back out to london around then to start filming and uh, it looks like it's gonna be the same trio of directors uh that uh, did this first season so it's gonna be like dan um dan gilroy and bo williams will be returning to write the upcoming season as well and then there's a newcomer of Tom Bissell who um, is going to be joining the cast as well, too. And it's not, from some of the stuff uh, they were talking about is that um, we already knew, like, in the season two, it's going to kind of be a little bit more fast-paced than season one, whereas the season one took place is taking place all over um, this one-year period of five years before Rogue One. Next season will be 
each kind of arc like we've had arcs this season uh, will be another year leading up to that uh and they had said that next season we'll have uh yavin will show up in there uh, so we'll see a, a bit of yavin in that season well so that'll be pretty cool and then we will also uh see a lot of things that will very squarely set up uh stuff that we saw in rogue one as well too so it's pretty exciting to know that they're at least going to be filming this soon i don't know when we're going to get mm-hmm. season two maybe in, we'll get it in next a year. fall i feel like june july is a good time if they're filming now nah yeah. it would be like september of october or october i feel like yeah because it's another 12 episodes so depends on how uh right. desperate they are for clicks yeah i feel like it just i and yeah it does i feel like it, it would depend on uh how they wrap up this season and what the the fan interest is at the end of the season see what the yeah. like how how much people because i mean i'm really enjoying it um uh so i feel like i i haven't and i haven't really talked to like other star wars fans about it because some of them could be pretty toxic even ones that i hang yeah. out with like on like a, a may the fourth day um not that i i mean i love them dearly uh <laughs> but some of them can be pretty toxic about everything and it's just like yo it's really like i'm entertained like that's what you gotta right. do to me entertain me and these movies are entertaining are they the greatest stories in the world no, they're stories that have been told time and time again. We have it's very hard to make an original story. So Yeah, you can say that for anything and everything. So Yeah. So that's oh. me. I, I'm I season two, I mean, depending, I mean we have a couple a few episodes left to season one now. Season two is gonna be pretty exciting. Great. I feel like there's I'm just hoping really- it's not gonna be too fast paced because the slow burn of season one has been good. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, I like. The Although, I feel I feel like it'll feel similar to it in a way, just because even though this is all taking place over like one year, they still feel like these very contained arcs that, like, there's this kind of through line through everything, mm-hmm. which I feel like they can still do even if that stuff is taking place over the course of four years. Well, they definitely can. But like certain things we're seeing now, how it's taking so long for a payoff. I just yeah. hope like they don't set something up and then give it the crappiest payoff just because they got to jump ahead six years or whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's the only fear I have is, oh, we have this really cool story and crap. I think it'll be all right. We'll see. But yeah. uh, although, yeah, the, yeah, because I don't think they're not going to do the, the hot D route of jumping mm-hmm. uh, 20 years over the course of one season. Yeah. Um, hot D is what I call House of the Dragon, just so people know what I'm talking about there. <laughs> I so just, just left it alone. Um, <laughs> now I'll make a very awkward segue. Speaking of hot D, this is where we segue to Vactor's segment of the episode. Vactor here once again. I gotta say, it, I feel like a broken record. Andor was good again. Another episode, fantastic. If you're not watching this, if you're a Star Wars fan, I don't know what to tell you at this point. Everybody is ra- ranting and raving about this show. We talked about it here on the Hold a Maneuver on the Comic Book Kaiju. This show is something special. With episode nine. I think it just cemented its place in the annals of Star Wars. And this is just a, an amazing show, television show. Whether you're a Star Wars fan or not, you have to be watching Andor. All right, back to you guys. All right, and we are back to discuss the ninth episode of Andor, uh, which is called Nobody's We're just going to ignore his review. We're just not going to pay attention to it. Just, it didn't <laughs> happen. It speaks for itself. <laughs> Obviously. Uh, thank you, Vector. Uh, but yes, this ninth episode, no. Nope. Well, I mean, like the episode is called Nobody's Listening. Yeah, uh, exactly. So it's the ninth episode of, the, of this first season of Andor. Uh, the episode is directed by Toby Haynes and it was written by Bo William. I wanted to say Williamson, but it's Williamon. Yeah. Williamon. 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 William Mammoth. I don't know. Ooh. Whatever. Willie yeah. Mammoth or Bo? Oh, Willie Mammoth. That. That's, what the, that's what his last name is. 
And the the first thing I had to say about this episode is that now, like I know we had had, I don't know if, if it was like all of us, but I know we had different various theories about who Vel. Spoilers for anyone who hasn't watched it, FYI. Yeah. We'll throw that although, out there. Although if you're if you're watching your review recap video about an episode you didn't watch, hey, it's kind of on you at this people, point. People get mad. Got to throw it out there. People have their own avenues of watching television. I don't think we should judge anybody. If they hear spoilers, <laughs> maybe people just like spoilers. They don't care. They love it. <laughs> it, it makes them feel good. Um, but anyway, feel spoiled. Vel, yeah. Vel. Now, we all thought she was going to be related to uh, Luthen, Luthen, which I mean, I guess it's still good. I guess maybe she's she still could be because so Vel Sartha is, is that her last name? Mon Mothma's. Yeah, I guess so. Uh, Mon Mothma's cousin. So I was like, oh, I didn't did not see that coming Mm-mm, at all neither did i i so, was i was pleasantly I was like, oh, surprised oh, though yeah so that's that puts like another kind of like wrinkle into this too because it's interesting even more so than like how uh her and luthan were like interacting then uh, mm-hmm. like when they were on albani so i'm even like more curious like i guess kind of about that and like how exactly uh mon it's weird to only say Mon too. Like I, I feel like I need to always say Mon Mothma. <laughs> Otherwise, it. no one should yeah. hold you back. And then, I, and then I also found out that her, I, I figured her husband's name was Perrin Mothma, but it, it seems like, at least for the lineage of like third names, her, it's almost like a Norwegian, uh, like naming convention with you know like how, like like Thor is like Thor Odin's son or. If they're a daughter, it's like, uh, um, so it would have been like Odin uh, daughters. It's yeah, yeah like, it's uh, the uh, Odin daughter. Odin daughter. <laughs> Odin yeah, daughter. so yeah, like uh, like my dog, I called her Sylvie Vibert daughter because she's supposed to be like <laughs> Sylvie. Um, but so I think that's kind of like how their names work. Like her name is Mon Mothma. His name is Perrin Pertha, or something like that. And then so it's like his is like a paternal name i don't know like how that all works i'm sure there's it's probably like in one of those like you know those huge uh visual dictionary things that they release for for star wars and i'm sure like pablo hidalgo not pablo hidalgo pablo hidalgo someone i feel like that's not i feel like that's not the right name (laughs) it's not a real name (laughs) you're not even a real boy (laughs) <laughs> oh. yeah but but anyways um like finding that out i was like oh dang that's interesting but um, you're just assuming they follow our marriage conventions and yeah, uh, oh, wherever they're from i i was right his name is pablo hodago i, 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 I overthought it but Brilliant. um i was thinking uh, uh viggo mortensen in the movie hodago <laughs> And there's that reference. So yeah. random. <laughs> the movie, the movie about uh, Viggo Mortensen riding a horse. Um, he was the black yeah. rider. And I guess kind of going with a lot of the stuff with Mon Mothma in this episode, there was this the scene with her and her daughter, and she was like, "Who let you do that?" And she, or and she, we'll see if your father will let you do that. And he and lets me let do let whatever me I do want. Anything. I was like, that sounds about right. Mm. That that's, that definitely sounds about right. I, although I've seen some theories where some people think that her daughter, uh, uh, Leda, I think her name is. Something um, like that. Close. There's a lot of there's a lot of people's names that sound like Leia. There's Clea, Leda. Uh, Leia's also, you know, around in this time period, walking mm. around doing Very stuff. So. Uh, so, like, some people think that maybe. Mon Mothma's daughter may possibly uh, be like part of like the the Rebel Alliance too, but like part like some like other subsection, and like they don't know that each other is on that. So she just sees kind of like this facade her mom is putting up, uh, trying to be almost like centrist within mm. like the the Senate, 
And then that's why she acts the way that she does around her mom because of that. Wouldn't that be a turn? Because we all hate parents so much. That him <laughs> and uh, the daughter are actually in the Rebel Alliance full time. Well, no, par- parents definitely not. He that that dude's a straight up douche. But <laughs> like, he's the worst father ever. He lets his daughter do whatever she wants. Yeah. No discipline. Yeah. I don't know. But yeah, like uh, with her, I feel like it still could go either way. And that's not just because I feel like my theory with Cyril is like, like <laughs> slipping farther and farther. He's just away. desperate for someone to be able to be there. <laughs> yeah, I know he, he he's going he's going like more and more stalker ish, ish. Like it mm-hmm. feels like in this, he's uh-huh. he's uh he's got issues. I mean, imagine meeting your boss, or not even it's not even his boss. Dedra is not even his boss. Imagine, but imagine doing what he did, like to to like try and get a promotion. You just like yeah. stalk you stalk the person. That would be able to do right. it like that he's i and then his relationship with his mother is hilarious too to me like it she's is. ridiculing you, him and then he's like i got a private box <laughs> yeah you did that's my boy that's all that's some cereal that here's more cereal do you like the whole, that? you want you want my private box i have no oh, yeah. ways of knowing it's like mm-hmm. what the heck's your private box well, <laughs> either of you watch that Dahmer series no, I did not. I stayed no. away from that. Well, he uh, had a I, private I box too. <laughs> and so which is very similar that, to what was in seven. We knew we knew where that happened. We knew what happened there. That's crazy. That's I funny. also laughed when she's like, I cook you two meals a day, but we only ever see him eating cereal. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's always breakfast. That is weird. I guess you gotta cook but, those puffs. They gotta she's gotta make those puffs. And milk the the mm. animal that they milk. <laughs> yeah, or it could be like that food that we've seen, like Obi Wan and uh, Ray eating, where like they essentially just like pour like what like water on it, and it's like hydrated, like the yeah. and tentacles like, come the, out. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. the hydrated pizza and Back to the Future Part Two. Yeah. You uh, sure not a hydrated pizza? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, uh, well, it was so just interesting cool. because he's like, I work really hard, and then it's like, no, you're stalking. That's what you're yeah. doing. You're just I mean, stalking. he's got he's got something like he's got some sort of vendetta uh, mm-hmm. against Cassian about something, and that's what I want to see a good payoff for. Like, why is it is it really just because he murdered two of his colleagues? Like, is that how driven he is to find him? Like, what is his his end game for this? And he says it to uh, uh, Dedra. He's like. Um, I want the same thing you want. Like I can feel it. I can see it in your eyes. Mm. Like that's he's psycho. He's psycho. And then she's like, I'll put you in a cage in the outer rim. Get away from me. <laughs> yeah, because that's where he deserves to go. That's because he's crazy. <laughs> that's what made me think maybe that's gonna be some payoff is he's gonna end up in the same prison Cassian's in, even though I don't think that's gonna happen in the timeline now. But that'd be uh, interesting. Maybe that's when they two get to confront each other is Hmm. Somehow they're in the same facility. Although it's it's interesting with Dedra too because, um, like earlier in the season, you're not like straight up rooting for her because you know that she works for the ISB. But you're also I love her like, character so much, and I you're like oh yeah, yeah, like listen to her. She knows what she's talking about, but kind of also don't listen to her because then to find out rebel stuff going on. Um, she's but, so like, maniacal and evil and you should hate her but you just yeah, root for yeah. her for some reason she's so good because she's so good <laughs> yeah she's, she's played very, so she's well. very good at torturing yeah oh she, the tor- she, that, that, like, she doesn't torture. torture she's not a torturer no she's not against left up to the doctor well that yeah. that's like part of it or or, or, or as the doctor goes hey he's just <laughs> that, he's just like that little wave where he's just like hey so oh man that he helmet. listened to what she listened to and didn't scream yeah it's like that just him describing what she's about to listen to like children's <laughs> screams are the best he yeah. described children's screams as being like the best thing to mess her up you yeah. know like that'll really get edited it. children's screams to boot like they listen yeah. to it and we're like this isn't good enough we gotta tweak it mm-hmm. oh man it's just so Oof. effed up yeah and we also find out that that they're gonna end up hanging uh Salmon Pak the 
the dude that owned the shop that had the the radio kind of Mm -hmm. uh which that that's gonna kind of weigh a little bit on bix i would assume because like he had turned that off he wasn't using it and she's like i need to use it i need to try to <laughs> contact somebody and then like at this immediately point, caught. also like <laughs> cut like cut that off so like it didn't even like do anything other than basically kill this dude so now that leaves that leaves his like son like without without anybody yeah um, he hasn't been hung so, yet so there's time yeah although they said what well, like basically what's left of him so right like i feel like he's pretty like effed up at this point and i did like the transitions back and forth between um like her like bix getting tortured and then it like cutting to the machinery uh, <laughs> five yeah with the machinery it was like a good like audio transition mm -hmm. yeah so you weren't sure if it was like her screaming from listening to that or if it was like the grinding of like I don't know, that whole machinery. scene pre-torture and post-torture was so good thematically like the staging of Dedra and Bix and how you see the power struggle and mm -hmm. how Dedra is like just taunting her with her body language and the fact that instead of showing Bix screaming and writhing in pain they just focus on her eyes yeah like, that was just made it more powerful in my mind yeah, that the whole just the, the the balance that they had throughout the whole episode uh, between just the, that pri the prison man that's so that, like they're all the, the twelve hours so they get one break <laughs> like oh, they yeah. get, I'm taking like they get one break in twelve hours and then then just the, the just everything the way it was shot this episode was um, I did the, the way they interweaved. The, the shots and telling the story uh was definitely something i thoroughly enjoyed and i really i'm I, like i love andy circus's character too like, mm -hmm. he's amazing agreed uh just his and i mean making his second appearance as a <laughs> as a person <laughs> or maybe as a person a, yeah as a person but he's he's um i'm i, I and now his character's arc is changing mm-hmm uh yeah. well yeah he had hope now he has no hope so yeah he needs yeah, a new hope <laughs> <laughs> so yeah his his i'm looking forward to seeing uh what kind of rebellion they have on the um on the guards and the uh and, and just yeah. how they yeah, try and take over that prison you know because they're, they're like the elevator's 12. not hooked up we can just take them down here and Mm -hmm. How they're just like trying to quick plan things. Something's going to go awry. He's going to get out, but something's going to go awry. Obviously, someone's going to die that's going to be semi important to yeah, him. Well, we know, or, we know at least two of them get out. We know at least Cassian and Melshi right. both get out. Yeah. But How they get out is what's going to be interesting. Well, they, everybody got out. Like, because yeah, <laughs> he's seen so much. Like, <laughs> cat. No, nah, I'm, I'm laughing at death. But uh, it's but Cassian <laughs> has has seen so much. Like he, he's like we. I've, I've I've mentioned it before in in Rogue One. He says like you have no idea what I've been through. Mm -hmm. Like we're seeing it. Yeah. We're seeing what he's been through at this point. So I feel like they might be the only two that make it. It's very possible because right. they just turned. Yeah. They got rid of an entire floor of people just like that. Just, just in a in yeah, a heartbeat. And that was interesting too to basically find out like that the one person was supposed to get out from another level and well, he got out they, and then they just yeah, put yeah, him back in yeah as they got out they put they put him back into the, another level so like and assume nobody would be the wiser and then everybody figured that out and they're like oh well we got to kill all this level so, mm -hmm. yeah um, it's also intriguing because is andy circus freaking out so much because of that or did he know someone on two that was just killed like absolutely i want to know more about that that's so just interesting little nugget and portrayal of the story well the yeah. the uh the older guy i forgot his name right now i had it uh <laughs> the one who died who in the stroke you? the doctor I said that he's seen him before and i think that's a little telling as well right as to what actually happens mm. uh in that prison um, and maybe we'll find out more about that. Maybe they're all just cycled through anyway. They're never getting, and I think actually that is because they're they they mention it like we're never getting out of here. And yeah, that's why we're cheaper that's to replace the, the droids. And yeah, 
Yeah. Yeah, that's the payoff at the at the end of the episode is how many guards are there? No more than twelve. Right. Like his, we need to rebel now. His mindset shifted immediately. Yep. Yeah. So and I think that's when the when the older gentleman died of that stroke. I think that's when it that click that 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 was that switch for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, that, yeah, oh, it definitely was. Gonna... I just, just I just feel days left on this floor. Maybe that's just my inner hope that there's more to it than that. That there's someone he knows on two. Yeah. That... There, oh, <clears throat> certainly there could be someone there. Absolutely. <clears throat> That would be, I think either way they go with it. I'm just interested in seeing uh, where they go with it. Mm. Because it's like, they the way they leave you hanging at every, I almost only want to watch it like the day before, almost binge it. Like watch so oh, yeah. much back-to-back episodes. Um, so I guess I don't like waiting because now I'm just going <laughs> to think about what's going to happen. Yeah, Disney, I don't know why they did that. They're like They broke the mold, like the trend of like putting everything out there. They're like, nope. We're doing weekly, and it's just like it's I, irked I, me I ever since. It. Except for I Tales of the Jedi, because no, yeah, except for Tales <laughs> of the Jedi. And... Well, that's because those are like fifteen minutes long. Um, but I I prefer it this way just because it's already like tough enough to like avoid spoilers mm-hmm. for one episode when it gets released. Mm-hmm. So like when an entire season gets released, so this is how there. Here's the ending of season one explained. Two hours after it got released. Yeah. Yeah, you got 59 hours of content and someone's posted a spoiler video within 30 seconds. Yeah, I, I agree. Like, did, you uh, okay. watch, did you just watch the me. ending? You, you got me. But no, I, I want it all at once. <laughs> I'm like of that mindset. I do my I, very well at avoiding spoilers. So I think what, what might be a cool idea maybe for like next season specifically with this show is like how we got the premiere where they released that that first arc as like the premiere maybe specifically with andor maybe do like these are like little sub movie events uh because i think that's how i might go back and rewatch this season eventually is so like watch those first three episodes then watch Mm -hmm. like the next arc all together then watch the next arc and so on and so forth but like just like those like little mini arcs and then so like maybe next year because it's supposed to be set up with like year four year three year two year one release i mean it, it would be over quicker i guess it'd be done in a month but um just release like that that arc the yeah. next arc then the next one um that might be one way and then just because i know like we've all been enjoying this show and we, we really have liked it but i know there's other people i know are waiting specifically because of like how it's arced in this mm-hmm. and people mm-hmm. are used to watching i guess shows in certain ways and <laughs> watching a s- story uh specifically kind of like in serialized shows to be given to you in a certain way whereas these really are similar to i guess like uh uh I'm trying to like because some of the marvel shows have been closer to like oh this is literally like a six hour movie cut up into mm. one hour chunks whereas that's kind of what this show has been it's like this is a three hour movie cut uh, cut into three chunks here um so that's a little bit different like how the the storytelling has been done in, with this too although i still think that like this episode even though it's kind of like the act two of the story it does it this whole episode had a really good job of like really holding tension the entire time mm. Like mm-hmm. you, you feel that kind of ramping up slowly and getting like more and more tense. I've seen a lot of people also say like, this is like one of the, like their favorite Star Wars things ever. Is just this episode specifically that there's and there's not, I don't. And in this episode, there's not like any spaceships. There's not any blasters. There's not any lightsabers. There's not any. Use I can agree with that sentiment. I said something very but, similar in my standalone review. But it, yeah, but it still is Star Wars. Um, so yeah. like Star Wars can have all that stuff and all that stuff's awesome, but it can still feel like Star Wars even without any of that stuff in there. Yeah, it's good storytelling. Exactly. That's, that's what it is. It's just good storytelling. Yeah. And that's that's a huge difference uh, in anything really of their series 
specifically is just the stark i think we talked about this in previous episode there's the stark difference in how this has been built out but mm. uh, as compared to everything else they've really done um even movie wise i would even say just the storytelling is so gripping because you are feeling for almost like we were we we all like Deidre. like <laughs> we shouldn't but we do it's just yeah this is the way the way it's written and and the way they're able to mm-hmm. uh I, I even just the, the the character relationships you can feel them even when they're not together you know yeah and i, I just yeah think that's, like, it's it's just pretty cool and that kind of brings me to a point i wanted to make because they have the scene where all the people in isb are called together to talk about um well I, some rebel f- f- pilot and how they're going to dispose of them essentially yeah and deidre's by that blevin guy her counterpart who hates her wasn't there and i'm like oh shit what's he gonna do now like what's he plotting like i was thinking about him during that whole thing while they're talking about just like killing a guy put him in a spaceship and pushing it off to space to be found later Uh, yeah she's ruthless that's another way she's ruthless she's like Mm -hmm. what if we kill him and just put him on the ship (laughs) <laughs> what what happens then? That's the best idea. <laughs> Just kill him, and it looks like an accident. Like that's that's it's, ruthless. It is she's horrible, but I love her at the same I, time because she's brilliant. <laughs> mm-hmm. I don't know. Oh, that's uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Like a little bit. That's almost why, like her and uh, Cyril, cereal. I'm just gonna call <laughs> him cereal because he eats cereal. <laughs> cereal. <laughs> it's fine. He, he may be cereal a serial killer. Cereal. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. But, like, that's why it almost seems like those two go really well together. Mm-hmm. He's like, that's like that's what Cyril likes. He's like, oh, yeah. Well, like, in my like, take, like, they're the same person, except she's successful. Yeah. Oh, like, yeah. She's the she's smarter she's and better. She's smart about it. He's not. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's just very, he uh, he's, acts very instinctually. Which is what got him in trouble in the first place and why he lost yeah. his job. Because he's like, Oh, I'm gonna go with my instincts, damn damn the system and damn mm-hmm. the the ranks and how this works. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm gonna do it. Damn my so, boss being like, it's their fault they died. Like Yeah. <laughs> screw so, them. He doesn't really he's he's one she follows the rules to a certain extent. And he's just mm-hmm. kinda like He's a he's a, a bad guy rule breaker. He's the one that thinks like outside. He's thinking really outside the box, right? You know, in in a way. And she's like the more straight version of a ba- of a bad. Like she's outside the box, but within the rules at the same time. Like she yeah. uses the rules in ways people weren't anticipating. Yes. Like well, forgot her request or whatever. She's like, well, according to this act, I can do that. Mm-hmm. Just like in your face. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, you didn't know Star, that. Star Wars. Mm-hmm. She knows the Star Wars version of the Patriot Act, basically. Mm-hmm. <laughs> oh man, maybe that's what Blevin's gonna do. He's gonna hire Cyril to be like her assistant or something, and put him right next to her. And we still don't uh, have a, We still don't know his uncle. Did we really meet his uncle? Or my? No, we haven't. Part? And that was another point I didn't write in the notes because Mon Mothma starts saying how she doesn't want to pair with this gangster type person. Uh-huh. Could that be Cyril's oh, yeah. uncle? Yeah, yeah, that could that could be interesting. Oh, yeah, and I like like how um uh, uh forget, forget what the banker dude's name is like her old friend, but like I like how uncomfortable he's making her husband. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, her, her old like, fling. They've been married yeah. since they were fifteen. Like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Or, Get over it, he dude. Like her old old fling when she was like eleven. Hey, it's Star Wars. I don't uh, age. Age is weird everywhere. I, 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 I don't even want to get into that. (laughs) Well, it's also a Star Wars where George Lucas was very fond of the brother and sister. Yes. So yeah, we just kind of ignore that part. I think it makes it easier. Anakin was nine, and uh, Padme was fourteen. Nothing happened then, though. Yeah, it's and it's she a galaxy. Until, she waited until he far, was far away from here. <laughs> she waited until he was night. Known as Alabama. <laughs> <laughs> uh, to our Alabama listeners, <laughs> <laughs> you can mute that. I don't know, whatever. <laughs> they know what they are. 
Oh dear. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Uh, so I'm not Marva, I'm Alabama now. Uh, is going to tragically die. <laughs> that was my other note. Was. On the note. That's it's clear uh, that there's going to be some tragic death of Marva based on um, Dedra calling out the fact that she's old and frail and useless, essentially. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But yeah. she finds yeah, out the link. Word, like, use her as bait for Cassian. Mm. Yeah. When that's, she's going to be like just blown up right in front of him. I mean, once they figure out where he is, it shouldn't be too hard to trace him, maybe. I'm not sure. I don't know what their reach is. Yeah. What's kind of funny is that they, they already have him, but they don't know that. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Keith. Like he's already they have Keith. Keith yeah. Grigo. Keith yeah, they're Grigo. chasing, they're chasing, they're grasping, literally grasping at straws, to be honest. How they don't like, know it's him is just that's the one mind boggling thing. Because he's they, shaved. Oh yeah, it's that's the whole thing. You're like, oh, he's cool and shaving. <laughs> like Superman putting fair, glasses on. Who's that guy? <laughs> he does have the curl. Well, on to be head. fair, people do look a lot different when they shave. It is true. It is true. Take the glasses and the beard off. You look a lot different. But oh, I see my father. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yes. I only see that when I take off the hat and. And then I'd have to do this, and then then that's my. Or hold on, <laughs> it's a goatee. Yeah. Or Walter goatee White, one of the two. I had a goatee for a while. There you go. <laughs> but we digress. <laughs> oh man, <laughs> Je- Jedi's have different beard things. Uh, side note: that's one of the things I liked about Tales of the Jedi too. Is that you saw that like little intermediate area between Episode Two and Three, where uh, Obi Wan is still rocking the. The mullet, the, the mullet. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Hadn't grown out yet. I enjoyed that yeah. series too, just as a little throw in there. I thought that was a lot of fun to kind of get a little peek into that kind of mm-hmm. uh storyline. Yeah. It was neat. It was fun. And it was and, quick too. You'd watch it in like a few hours. Yeah. And I think Mike and I recorded it after Hold of last week. So um we did. If you haven't watched it yet, I'll I'll put it in here as like a check out this video. Uh, <laughs> I, we did that on it. Link in the that, descriptions. And, yeah, uh, but yeah, we talked about it on that. Um, yeah, I I enjoyed Tales of the Jedi, but was there anything else within this episode of Andor that you guys wanted to bring up before we kind of like wrap up and close out for this this week? Maybe you two might. One of you might know. That torture helmet they put on Bix, it looks like some communications helmet that some dude was wearing on a Death Star in episode four. Did it not? You know what I'm talking about? I'd have to go back and and watch uh, to like make sure, but it I looks wouldn't so doubt familiar. it. Because we've had we have had like little Easter eggs of things from other parts of this universe. And if it is, like, how show. sadistic is that that they make him wear that the whole time? Oh, yeah. Or, like, if you can handle it, that's how <laughs> yeah. you can be, uh, uh, you know, an imperial um, whatever. Any <laughs> department in the imperial army. So, yeah, they sit there and they handle it and they're just, like, listening to children screaming, just like, do, 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 do. I am focused oh, yeah. now. This is the good, this is the oh, good children stuff. screaming helps me focus. <laughs> That's what's in Cyril's uh, special box. Could be. Oh, Something's goodness. in there. We're going to find Something. out. I, if we don't find out, I'm very, I, I might be disappointed. If, if we don't find box. out what's in that box, I'll be disappointed. <laughs> if it's Gwyneth Paltrow's head, I'll, I'll be very excited and elated <laughs> as well. <laughs> Brad Pitt next... shows up as a, as a Jedi next week. He's What's like, in the box? box? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, ah. I, met, I would imagine he gets that on the street sometimes. Like he's just oh, walking yeah. around. People are like, "What's in the True. box?" He's like, "Yep, all right." <laughs> <laughs> like, what do you say? What do you say? Okay, you can't say anything. I I still don't believe Cyril's making it to season two. He's also. Something's yeah. happening with him. He's not going to make it. Whether he's imprisoned, dead, he puts himself. He puts himself in in bad positions, mm-hmm. um, and he got lucky to get that 
promotion because I think in a way uh, Deidre might like him, that part of him, that pursuit of Mm -hmm. justice uh, in their eyes. So that's, that might keep him alive or it might get him killed. So that's, what's fun about his character though. Yeah. And so interesting about it. It's like, he's crazy, but you can see why he is the way he is too, with him having the relationship with his mother in uh, being brought in. Mm. Uh, Cause you don't really have that that often. There's not a lot of like mother son. No. Cause all the Jedi are taken away from their mother. So you don't yeah. see their mothers. So you don't get to Except see Anakin and you see yeah. what happens there. Yeah. He, oh yeah. Yeah. He kills all of them. <laughs> he killed all of them. <laughs> They're animals. We saw it. I'm like, yeah. Uh, yeah, so we have the the last episode of this arc for episode ten, and then we'll have like basically the two episode arc for episodes eleven and twelve to finish out the season. So, yeah, should be, be interesting, interesting to see what happens with this prison mm-hmm. break on the horizon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because I'm assuming that'll that'll wrap up in this next episode, and then I'm not sh- sure what like that last two episode arc is going to be at that point. Maybe like. Cassian like formally joining the the Rebel Alliance there at the mm-hmm. end. Because I'm assuming we'll see Saw again uh, before we'll see the Saw. season. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great. But yeah. All right, guys. So that's going to wrap us up for episode 29 of The Hold Maneuver and episode 9 of Andor. Uh, you can leave us a review on the podcast Podcast catcher of your choice, mostly Spotify and Apple Podcasts. Also here on YouTube, if you're watching this, uh, all the usual stuff. You know, ring the bell, hit the thumbs up thing to like it, <laughs> hit the subscribe ring button, bell. ring that little yeah. bell, <laughs> yeah, ding ding ding. Uh, do do all the things. Uh, and then in our show notes, you can find all of our social media handles for Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and whatnot, as well as our individual handles for myself and for for Mike. Uh, and then uh, I'll put yours in there uh, again as as well, Adam. If you want to remind everybody where they can find you online too. Uh, on Instagram, I'm at Adam mm-hmm. Daniel Danny, and then on Twitter, I'm Adam Danny Daniel. Play on my name, I guess. <laughs> uh, but those are the only two social medias I have. Uh, and uh, yeah, you can follow me, and I'll interact with you. Maybe I don't know. <laughs> It could happen. There we go. Depends there on what you say. Question. Yeah. Yeah. See where we're especially at. If, especially if you're from Alabama. Yeah. Alabama. We love Florida. you, Alabama. Don't worry. <laughs> yeah. Mike's gonna get all the the at replies from from Alabama once this episode goes out. <laughs> oh boy. Hey, as uh, long as they don't make fun of Elvis again, they got me a lot of hate on my other channel. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. yeah no. You, you, you don't ever make. make fun, you don't ever make fun of Elvis. I didn't make fun of the person. I just said the movie wasn't very good, in my opinion. Was... You're entitled you also, to that. Yeah. You also can't make. Don't tell that UHF. to the folks on the internet, though. <laughs> and don't make fun of UHF either. Yeah, I'm almost incited a riot on that. Well, oh, UHF yeah. wasn't terrible. It just wasn't that good. <laughs> I haven't seen it since I was 13. Give me some. Oh yeah, I saw that when I was a kid on like WWOR New York or something like that. Oh, okay. <laughs> on TV. It seems that seems like the perfect place to watch you each F is on that tra- like that kind of a channel. Oh that yeah. It's essentially like upsending. Pretty sure I watched it at Mark's house and fell asleep. So because you were tired, not because the movie was boring or anything. <laughs> Just had a long day. <laughs> long day of being 13. <laughs> yep. Those were long days. Uh, and speaking of long days, uh, you can email us at holdopod at gmail.com. As always, we are grateful to George Lucas for creating the Star Wars universe. Oh, dear. Thank the maker. George, appreciate you. <laughs> Make more movies. Stop being afraid. Every time I hear George, I just think of my dad. George. My, da- my dad's name's George. I don't. I don't. I have an Uncle George. <laughs>